Hi, my name's Jane Lance. I'm CEO of Cancer 52. Our work entails ensuring that the voice of people with rare and less common cancers is heard at a policy and influencing making level across England and the wider UK. We're focused at the moment on ensuring that that voice is heard in the longer term plans being written by the NHS for the future of cancer care in this country. So we're delighted now to present a collection of patient views on what they think should be in that plan. So the long-term plan has been a long time in gestation since the Prime Minister announced a new funding settlement in the summer. And we wanted the long-term plan not to be the NHS's plan, but to be the public's plan, as well as the Minister's, as well as NHS England. And so what we've done is you know, made sure that the National Cancer Director, the Cancer Alliances and the charities, all part of what I call Team Cancer, are part of feeding that in. And organisations like Cancer52 have been absolutely critical in doing that because you are patient voice and we want patient voice to be at the heart of it, otherwise patients won't have any faith in any confidence in it. In the long term plan I'd like to see more things for people with minority cancers, not just lung cancer, bowel cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, everything else has got to be covered too. As a patient with ovarian cancer, it's really key to see that the rare and less common cancers feature quite highly. It's always been a focus on the, the common cancers um, and we need our voice heard. I was a patient representative on the last cancer strategy and one of the frustrating things for me is that it is all still taking far too long. So I hope the long term plan actually says can we do things more quickly in the short term. We want to see the long term plan prioritise the teenage and young adult specialist workforce. So we know that since Teenage Cancer Trust has started developing specialist workforce and we've seen decreases in mortality and increases in five-year survival rates. So it's absolutely imperative that in the long-term plan going forward that young people are prioritised. What I would like to see with um, people with cancer in the future is more support with people um, with younger, um, rarer cancers. Um, I was diagnosed when I was 25 so there wasn't very much emotional support. Um, I also wasn't very aware of the side effects that I was going to have on my skin and I was young and it meant a lot for me to look and feel good about myself. Well I'd like to see a bigger emphasis on the patient experience, the patient pathway. What it's like for a patient going through in initial suspicion of cancer, initial tests and diagnosis, I'd like to see that improved. research, more money putting into it, more recognition, improve survival really. I just hope they can improve survival rates and actually improve the quality of life for people like myself who are actually living with cancer long term. There's about two and a half million of us and I think there's an unmet need there. Well one of our main ambitions from Bloodwise perspective would be tailored emotional and psychological support for all patients with blood cancer um, and we would like to see accurate diagnosis at the earliest possible stage. I'm hoping there can be some clear identification of uh, methodology to actually uh, help to improve early diagnosis rates. Um, I'd like to see uh, help with a more early diagnosis uh, and also how peer support can be used even though they're rare and less common cancers perhaps it's uh, the fears thoughts and emotions that we all share and sometimes with patients themselves who have a role to play not just in their own treatment but in the treatment and support uh, mentoring of others who are being similarly diagnosed and I think that's a role where government strategies have tended to be very light and um, they see everything being done by formal organizations that they can fund but out there, um, and I've learnt over the years with myeloma, and I'm sure it's the same with other, other charities as well, there are some very competent, vociferous, somebody said gobby people this morning, who can talk from the heart because they are patients and because they know what it's like as a patient to be on the receiving end of treatment. More people die of, of, of blood cancer than breast cancer, more people die of blood cancer than prostate cancer, yet we are not recognised uh, as a single entity. Um, there is an all-party parliamentary group on blood cancer. Parliament recognises this, 
but the sector still hasn't quite come to that that, that, that way of thinking. You know, leukemias are split apart from lymphomas. Lymphomas are split between Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's. Myeloma is different. We need to give that separate identity. We can get the awareness raised. They're really raising awareness and helping educate, not just the NHS and, and GPs, but the the public as an entirety on these rarer cancers because when people know more you can be more empowered to take action if you think that maybe you or a family member might be showing signs and symptoms and the more awareness things get the more can happen to help improve treatment and outcomes. The very first question that, that came out after the Prime Minister's announcement is, uh, does this mean every cancer? Because, you know, we always obsess about the big ones, you know, the breast, the prostate, and they're very, very important. But, you know, for breast, we're well over 75% anyway. So the first question was, well, what about the rarer, the less common, which Cancer 52 obviously exists to promote the, uh, the awareness thereof? And that ambition absolutely is across the piece in cancer because, you know, it's no good us just doing really well in one race at the Olympic Games. We want the whole Team GP to do well at the Olympic Games. And I see the fight against cancer in exactly the same terms. We want the whole of Team Cancer across the different disciplines to do well. And that means we have to reach into the rarer and less common cancers in order to move the dial and to achieve the kind of life change that we want to achieve.